Hey guys and welcome back to another video. Today I'll be showing you how to update your rooted or modded Nexus 6P to the latest and greatest version of Android, which is the February security update. I forgot what build number it is because they're so long right now. Uh, but anyways, I know this video is pretty late, but uh, we're going to go ahead and do it anyways. Uh, maybe next time I'll be doing something with the OTAs instead of factory images, but again we're just going to use the factory image again and uh, let's get right into it. So of course you'll need to have a few things already set up. So you want to download the drivers or at least have the drivers already installed for your 6P. Now if you've rooted your phone on the same computer, you don't need to do anything, but if you've changed computers or you deleted the driver somehow, or if it's not showing up, you can always just go back to this video and have a look on how to set it up. Now once you've got your drivers configured, you'll want to download the latest platform tools from the Android SDK. Now download the one that is right for your operating system, click on the blue link, agree to the terms and conditions, and then download it using the blue button. Next up, you want to download the latest factory image that is most appropriate for your device, and yourself actually, which is either this one, the OPM314, 014 or the OPM5015. Now that one is only for SoftBank, which I believe is a carrier in Japan. Otherwise you'll be downloading the regular 8.1 February update. Next up, you want to download the latest version of Magisk, which is just here on the XDA thread. Just scroll down and click on latest Magisk. And last but not least, you'll want to have the latest version of TWRP, our custom recovery, to ensure that things go very smoothly. So in the end, you'll have about these four files downloaded in your Android folder. So we want to open up our platform tools zip. Now if you already have the platform tools somewhere, you don't need to extract these new ones, but you might want to update your old ones instead. If you've installed it a different way by adding it to your user bin or your path environment variable, you can probably skip all this as well. Just bring up a command prompt window or a terminal window or a PowerShell window as long as you know how to use fastboot and ADB, or well, just fastboot really. So we're going to highlight these five files, which is the ADB EXE and the two DLLs, the fastboot EXE and the libwimp thread-1 DLL. Extract those into the same Android folder. Once you've done that, you can close this. Next up, you'll want to open up the factory image, like so. We're going to open up the folder that's inside, and then we're going to extract the bootloader and radio, and then open up the image zip file inside here. Now we're going to do this the manual way. We're going to flash each image individually. I think it just helps with uh, making sure we get everything right. Okay, once you've opened the image zip, all you have to do is extract these three files. You can deselect recovery.img as we're going to be flashing or updating TWRP if necessary. So I'm going to wait a bit for this to extract in the meantime. Alrighty, so we've got our images extracted and now you can see we've got a whole heap of stuff in our Android folder. Don't worry, we can close the image zip file and we can close the factory image as well. Once that's done, you'll want to connect your device to your computer and you'll need to copy the relevant files over as well, which is just Magisk. So all you have to do, of course, is plug in your phone with the USB cable and then once you've done that, expand your notification shade, change USB for charging this device and tap on transfer files. Once you've done that, you need to go back to your computer and then from there you'll be able to access, uh, at least, in this PC, your Nexus 6P, and your internal storage. Just copy everything down here, so just the Magisk zip file. Already have that done. And once you've done that, we can now go ahead and boot into the bootloader, where we'll do most of our updating process. So we can close this, and of course we'll need to go back to our device once more. And from here, what you want to do is hold the power button and tap on restart. And as soon as the screen goes black or freezes, press the volume down button and keep holding it until your phone reboots back into the bootloader. Okay, so once that's done, you can leave your device plugged in and make sure you've got that. And now we can head back to our computer where we'll start our updating process. So once you're back on your computer, all you have to do is open up a new terminal, command prompt window or PowerShell window, depending on which operating system you're on. And uh, right now I'll overlay some information on how to execute these commands that I'm going to be typing. I'll be using the command prompt, but if you're using PowerShell or whatever option is available to you, um, you can definitely follow what's on the screen now and just take note of how you're going to be using Fastboot. So right now on Windows, you can 
hold shift and right click on an empty space in the same folder and then click on one of the options here so you'll either have open command window here or open PowerShell window here I'm going to be using my console emulator which just shows up with the command prompt by now you should know how to run your fastboot executable depending on which shell you're using if not just go back a couple of seconds and look at those images again but otherwise our first command would be to check if our device is connected to our computer so we're going to type in fastboot devices and once you get the serial number out here so if I just highlight it, your phone is connected and we're ready to go. So, so first things first, we're going to flash the updated bootloader. So we're going to type in fastboot flash bootloader. Leave a space in the end of bootloader and drag in our bootloader image. Hit enter. Once that's done, we're going to reboot back into the bootloader. So we're going to do this by typing in the fastboot command fastboot reboot dash bootloader. Once your phone is back into the bootloader, we can now go ahead and flash the updated radio image. Type in fastboot flash radio, leave a space after radio, and drag in our radio image. Here it is, like so. And once you're done the radio, we're going to reboot back into the bootloader. And you can run the same commands before by pressing the up arrow key on your keyboard and then pressing enter to select the one you want. So once your device is back into the bootloader, you can now begin the main flashing process. And we're going to do that by flashing the latest boot image. So we're going to type in fast boot, flash boot, leave a space in the end and drag in our boot image. Hit enter. Once that's done, we're going to flash the updated recovery image, so our TWRP image. So we do this, we're going to type in fast boot, flash recovery, as it will replace our current recovery drag in our TWRP image and hit enter. Once that's done, we're going to go over and flash the system image. So we're going to type in fastboot flash system, leave a space in the end and drag in our system image. This may take a while, it may be up to a minute and a half as it is quite big. And uh, I'll just fast forward this, but usually it does take around 80 seconds to do. Alrighty, and we're finished flashing the system image. Last but not least, we're going to flash the vendor image. So we're going to do the same thing. Type in fastboot, flash vendor. Oops. I think that is a N. Okay, yeah, vendor. Leave a space after vendor and drag in our vendor image. Hit enter. This should go a lot quicker than our system image. And then once this is done, we're going to reboot into the recovery mode. And we're going to do this right now. So go back to our device and then you want to use the volume buttons here to navigate the menus and then make sure it says recovery mode up there and then once it does just hit the power button to select it and our phone will boot into TWRP the latest version that we just flashed. Now here is where we're going to reboot our phone using Magisk. So once you're in TWRP uh, just enter your pattern, pin or passcode that's wrong but um, if you enter the right pin or password and it doesn't work try rebooting back into the recovery by pressing cancel down there and then just going to the reboot menu and rebooting back into recovery. Now here you can swipe to allow modifications if you like, and then we're going to tap on install, scroll down until we see our Magisk zip file that we copied over, or maybe the one you already have that exists in the Magisk manager folder, you can use that as well. And this is going to reinstall Magisk onto our device. Alrighty, so once that's done, and you don't need to flash anything else in TWRP, you can just tap on that reboot system button and that will take you away. If you're prompted to install TWRP, the app, on your phone, uh, you can do that if you want to, but I don't like stuff like that on my phone. So our device is going to boot up, and once we're booted up, you should see that we haven't lost any data, and we should still be rooted on the February security update. Now I'm going to fast forward this until we get back to Android, and then from there we'll just have a look at Magisk Manager, see if we're still passing safety net, which of course may not work at any time due to the cat and mouse nature of this issue but uh, we should see at least all our modules still there so you don't have to reinstall anything which is great alrighty so our phone's turned on let's unlock it it should say updating android yes and I guess uh, we'll just have a look at the settings just to make sure that we've updated properly go to system and then about phone and we should see we're on the 5th of February security update. 
which is nice. That'll take us to the bulletin, I think. Let's have a look at our magic manager, and we should see that we are rooted. Yes, and there's no safety net check because my Wi Fi is off. Okay, so there we are. We're installed, and we can check our safety net status if it works. Sweet. And what's this? I guess uh, just a leftover notification. But yeah, that's it, guys. Thanks for watching. And if you have any questions and all that, feel free to leave it down below. You can find me on Discord, and we can have a look there as well. And as always, happy flashing.